Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 21 online CFM game. We are now in week 2 of the 2024 season. Here in the Premier Madden League, we have a primetime matchup with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on deck. And I'm going to try something new in this video. For the first time, we're going to be uploading two full games in one video. This is something, an experiment I want to try out for Season 5, the final season for Madden 21 of the CFM to see if it's something that can carry over for next year because as you guys know the uploads have been a bit inconsistent with this Lions Online franchise right and I think one way to fix that is to just do one big upload every week of you know two full games because you know I can't control when these games are played it the advance in this league is every 72 hours but you know given other people's schedules you don't play the games every 72 hours you could play two games on the same day if things um, that actually just happened to me today or yesterday but you know you can play two games at like totally random times so that you know trying to upload those and dictating all that it, it, it's you know it's inconsistent right and this is the best way to find consistency with that at least I'm gonna try it out let me know what you guys think I don't know the video is too long I don't think there's such thing as too long of a video on YouTube nowadays, right? You could have a 40-minute video, like this is going to be 42 minutes, and Galladay! Oh, man, I guess you can't be too open. That looked open for all intensive purposes, and that field goal looked good! For all intents and purposes, but our opening drive with promise will end with zero points after missing Galladay on third down and then Johnny Hecker missing the field goal. Yes, that is Johnny Hecker, our punter, now at kicker. Might as well put him there. He is a superstar with better stats, so yeah, that's uh, basically something I want to try as far as the uploading, um, you know, like with the way YouTube is nowadays, you can just, you know, watch. if you want to watch a lot of the video, pause it and come back to it later. That's always an option, so, you know. So let me know you, how you guys feel about that. I know some people say videos can never be too long. And plus, you know, I feel like this gives me more avenues to upload different stuff more frequently. Rather than, you know, the franchise, you know, it's going to come out about every single three days. Because that's how long the games play. But we know we're going to get one big franchise video a week. And we can try to stay as up to date as possible while doing that. As Justin Shorter getting over the top of the defense somehow on third down and 17. Thank you very much, Justin. And Amunra getting over. Open on the zig, he'll get the first down. We're looking for points this time around. Don't want to come up short again. DJ! Oh no! That's exactly coming up short as we're picked off by Antoine Winfield Jr. Oh, I think we've thrown way too many picks to the young Winfield in this CFM over the years. Add one more to the resume. So, long story short, that's what we're going to do. Let's hop into the game action now, right? So, by the way, the... Uh, one more thing. The title for this video, DJ Uyongo, a um, X Factor dev story, right? Where is that? That's not happening here. Well, that's part of two videos or two games in one video. And that's all I'll say about that for now. For now, let's get into this action as Ronald Jones on third down. He'll get the carry. He'll get the first down. Jones still the main back for Tampa Bay in year five of the CFM. He'll make the catches. Sam Howell able to dump it down quickly as we try to send the blitz on first down. Jeremy my moon making the tackle on second down it's third and short this time it's Robinson and once again Tampa Bay third and short able to convert able to get the first down Tampa Bay with a chance to take the lead in this game after a couple of promising Lions drives ended in zero oh but Tampa Bay is erased as well Bobby Wagner lights up Sam Howell he never stood a chance as whoa that is surely defensive pass interference there on Carlton Davis, who kind of panicked in that situation covering Amonra St. Brown, but, oh, Amonra gives you plenty of reasons to panic, because he's dominant one-on-one -on -one in the open field. He makes the catch on Winfield, and on the next play, Chanel says no, coming up empty, or Chenault. I, I, I need the official pronunciation on that man's name, because I've been giving... A couple of suggestions on how to pronounce Lavishka Chenault's, Chenault's last name, and apparently both of them have been wrong, right? Like, classic YouTube comments, man. Like, <laughs> I love you guys, though, but, like, you know, the way YouTube comments can be sometimes. Someone will tell you one thing, it's wrong, and the next guy's like, oh, that's wrong, too. So, like, uh, what can you do except play on next down wide open? What has happened here as Chris Godwin has absolutely undressed the Lions defense right by Okuda for six. 
We watch Jeff Okuda one on one. It is year five of this CFM. Leaving Jeff Okuda without safety help is still not good news for our Lions. I still try it because Okuda, according to his stats, should be a lockdown corner. But against half decent wide receivers, man, Okuda gets smoked. But I feel like some, that's something that happens on next gen as well, right? When you try to take away safety help on a play oh hold on a second wide open Debo Samuel he's gone 83 yards for the touchdown long bombs are the name of the game here in Detroit as Tampa Bay and the Lions trading touchdowns yeah so I feel like you know when you take away a safety on a play that's intended for safety help sometimes that happens like when you're messing around with your adjustments too it's still part of the learning curve of next gen like this is the second game we're playing in this franchise in next gen it's all still like we're all learning on the fly as far as the league I don't think there's anybody maybe besides like two or three people in this league that have played in a franchise on next gen before playing in this uh imported franchise so you know we're all just kind of figuring it out including the tampa bay buccaneers who you may remember we played in the preseason a couple of times about a week ago in real time <laughs> about two weeks ago in upload land and of course we had that game against tampa bay where we nearly scored 100 on them and you would think oh yeah so we're gonna do that again well tampa bay says that was just the preseason this is the regular season but we get the stop on third down thankfully that's gonna force the punt shout out to jordan birch for getting in there birch now a superstar he played like a superstar last season now he's got the star under his name for full recognition the second year defensive end here is dj ui angole the second year quarterback the number one overall pick from last year's draft he'll get the direct snap on third down to take it for the first down dj with that big frame remember he is 250 just about i think he's actually 249 in the game but just about 250 pounds i mean dude's kind of built like cam newton so why not use him in cam newton-esque fashions Fun for me. I like doing stuff like that. So we'll make it happen. Third down. DJ, he's got the speed to leave the pocket. Cam Newton. Esco, but he can't get the first down. Not quite there. Devin White denies him one yard short. And the offense is on the field from our own 36-yard line. We are normally aggressive in these situations. We'll go for it here. John Emery, he's got the first down. Nice block there by Frank Ragno. We might have been able to get more yards than what we got there. But that looked like it could have been a big play. But I was just like, I want to get the first down. That's all I'm really focused on. And, you know, sometimes you just got to have that approach. Oh, underthrown pass. Still hauled in by Kenny Galladay. Oh, Kenny G. Make your presence felt. Ball is lost and picked up by Joe. Uh, Jonah Jackson there. That was sketchy for just a moment. Oh, nonetheless, it's second down and 28. Not an ideal situation. And we'll get picked off. That's Sean Murphy bunting with the INT. Looking for Galladay. And that pass was mightily underthrown by DJ Ui Angale. And I think it might have been because his stamina was completely depleted. I don't know if that's a thing in Madden where your quarterback's like on the worst stamina level possible. That they underthrow passes. But... I, I felt like that was happening a couple, like, the pass that Kenny caught earlier on the drive. That was underthrown as well. And I think DJ Stammon was depleted for that play, too. So, I don't know if that's a real thing or not. But, either way, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm, like, doing some weird pass leads that I should not be doing. Who knows? Either way, once again, good drive. Zero points to show for it. And all of a sudden, here's Tampa Bay. Not really managing the clock too well. They'll go play action on third down. And down goes Howell. I believe was Julian Okwara off the edge. And well, they'll make this field goal a bit tougher here for Smith, the kicker. It's up. And he has the leg. It is still good. But Tampa Bay being down four points, they probably should be feeling good about this, right? Because we've moved the ball well, and just about every time we've had the ball offensively, we just haven't been able to cash in the checks. As we have DJ with six seconds left, he'll roll the pocket. Do we risk something here? Oh, we do! And it's going to be incomplete. DJ having a rough game here. Nine for 16, some home run hits, but also a lot of strikeouts. And will we take one quick shot? No, this time we'll play it smart here, throw it out of bounds, and we'll take it to the end of the first half. Tampa Bay does get the ball to start the second half here with a chance to take the lead on this drive. Tampa Bay has had some successful offensive drives themselves, right? They had the one driver, Howell, fumbled, and they've been getting points the last couple of times. They possess the football. Oh, Ronald Jones is possessed. What a move. Get 
getting away from Wagner. This is a foot race that Jones won't lose. And Tampa Bay indeed takes the lead on one huge play. Ronald Jones getting the job done. And, <laughs> I mean, it looked like we had guys there, but Ronald Jones was simply better on that play. That's really all you can say. And that's the second time Tampa Bay has gotten us with a big play. They got the long Chris Godwin touchdown. They got the long Ronald Jones touchdown run. And, you know... You think about the way this game is going, we just keep plugging away at it offensively and we're turning it over, ho, oh, over Winfield, it's Kenny Galladay, oh, Galladay will score the touchdown, that's the kind of play we need right back at you, that's exactly the point I was about to make, and Kenny G just crushed it, oh, it's the Galladay season, how many picks have we thrown to Antoine Winfield Jr., not on that play because Kenny Galladay simply climbed higher higher baby higher and we'll take the lead one more time and hopefully for the last time we have a lead change in this game so yeah I mean we didn't want to go on long touch or long drives without getting points we wanted to get I mean we could have gotten long drives we just need to get points but hey man Galladay's gonna do that sure why not wasn't a great pass probably got bailed out there but, hey, man, that's why you get a 6-4 Kenny Galladay on your squad. Galladay's been one of the few mainstays as we're now in year five of the CFM as far as Lions that we inherited from the jump in the CFM as Ronald Jones steps out of bounds there. That's going to cost him a chance of getting the first as he tried to turn it up field, fourth down and one. And the Bucks are still on the field. It's Howell who'll get the ball. He's looking to pass. He'll roll to the right, space to run, and he'll take it. He'll get the first. He'll get more. And this time he slides before getting cracked by Bobby. Wagner once again and Tampa Bay right back in the red zone Ronald Jones doing great in this game both as a running back and a receiving back third down though Jones not in the game it's Howell looking to pass and trying to run again oh he tries to keep his footing but this time he's eventually down credit the sack for the second time this game to Julian Okwara Okwara is off to a pretty good start this season must be said so uh, that's gonna be a big stop on third down that'll help us maintain the lead here it's a one point lead but it is a lead at the end of the day that's shorter in motion and dj who looks shorter's way open shorter downfield and the big plays continue oh yango lays over 400 yards passing as we're still in the third quarter dj wants more he'll get a few more that's gonna be amonra st brown and the balanced attack by the Lions has been the story of the day. Shorter's making plays. Debo has been cooking third down. That's Debo open. But DJ misses the easy throw. And now it's fourth down and three. And we don't have Hecker on the field. DJ and the boys lining up. They'll go for it. Oh, looking for Chanel. Chenault. Denied. Denied. I'm pronouncing the name right. Pronounced. I'm making the right read. Turnover once again without points in. You know, at this point, it's just like, oh, man. Like, if we just played not a dumb game, we'd be doing great. But, you know, we're giving up long touchdowns, giving up the easy stuff, and then our chance to get easy points, we keep shoving it away every single time. It's like we don't want to win this game. But the defense continues to show up when it matters. That's going to be a sack for Aiden Hutchinson, a recovery for Deshaun Hand, a Monra flipping upside down. DJ continuing to... Oh, absolutely shred the defense. Cole Komet, the recipient of two touchdowns in his first game as a Lion. He'll get the reception there. No huddle, late third quarter. Quick pass. That's a Monra bubble. Touchdown, Lions. DJ Uwe Angole, when he's not turning the ball over, has been unstoppable as the Buccaneers nearly stopped our PAT from ever having a chance to go through. That was scary. It looked like he got the jumping animation. I don't know who this guy's kicker is, by the way. Shout out to my guy, Deloy, but I don't know who his kick returner is. That dude's like... That was my height. <laughs> As Sam Howell rolling the pocket. Howell's done a good job using his mobility. This time he'll use it to create the pass to Chris Godwin. We do a decent job of making only a gain of six. Triple option. Somehow got it off to Andy Janovich. But it's still going to be a loss at the end of the day of three yards. Marcus Mariota in the game on third down. Under pressure. And he doesn't quite have the arm strength of Sam Howell to fit that pass into OJ Howard. Swatted by, I believe, Walker. And that's going to force a three out by the Bucks offense on a critical set of downs. I don't know what Mariota was doing in there, but hey, we'll take it. It's Amonra once again. Amonra's doing a great job in the short to intermediate game. Obviously, he's got that breakaway speed, 
But you don't gotta send him deep every single time. Wide open shit. No. Oh, we kept it in. It would have been a touchdown, but the cash nonetheless we will take. Oh, DJ trying to go low for Amonra. And that's unfortunately gonna be swatted at the line of scrimmage. So oh, Chanel, who had the touchdown run earlier, he'll get a solid first down carry. And you know, we haven't ran the ball too much because we've been passing with success until now. But the running game is there, but unfortunately not really available for us on second down and 23. DJ escaping the pocket. Oh, the running game is there because DJ oh, nearly got the first down. Turned the second down in a mile into third down and maybe an inch. Oh, DJ, no. Picked off. It's Dean with the interception. The Lions keep the door open for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who nearly got a pick six. Amonra able to get the chase down. LeBron James-esque as Ronald Jones gets the carry. Bucks down eight. They need a touchdown and a two-point conversion with under five minutes to go in regulation. It's Howell on the run. Wide open. Oh, no. Oh, Jay Howard losing sight of where he was in the game. He was out of bounds. It's incomplete. A third down run for Jones. Bobby fighting for all it's worth. The teammates collide with him. And it's going to be a stop behind the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and one. Clock is ticking. Bucks on the field. It's Howell once again looking to pass quickly. Incomplete. Incomplete. Jeremiah Moon doing his job at that middle linebacker position position just mock up the pass that's all you got to do in that situation he did it to perfection oh look at john emery one-on-one -on -one. oh no oh whoa oh john emery roasting antoine winfield and that's a touchdown and that might have been the dagger our lions might have finally been able to extend fully to get us a victory and to go to two and oh and what a fashion to do it john emery Ho -ho! He's cooking with gasoline on that play. Poor Winfield, man. <laughs> That's why I click off sometimes, man. I'll keep it real with you guys. That's why I click off sometimes on tackles because that can happen to you. And sometimes you just don't want to get N1 mixtaped and... I'm sorry, d -Lloyd, but you just got an one mixtape. But that's a beautiful pass, middle of the field of Chris Godwin. That's just a perfect pass. Not much more you could do about that as Ronald Jones running the ball. Tampa Bay still with all their timeouts, but they're not quite moving the ball quickly, something they struggle with at the end of the first half during the two-minute drill. Now they finally go no huddle here, trying to get one more snap before the two-minute warning on the new set of downs. How will get it? How will drop? And he's in trouble. He gets hit as he throws, and that's going to be maybe a to OJ Howard, but the pass rush uh, it's been doing a decent job, right? We try to send a couple of blitzes, but guys like Aqua are getting there consistently. It's been nice to see this game. Ooh, look at the bracket coverage there. Jeff Okuda there to break it up. Third down, obvious four down territory. And Tampa Bay will run the ball. Robinson trying to get the first down, and yet again, oh, it's Groundhog season. Fourth down and short. And Tampa Bay looking to go for it. They'll pass it one more time in this situation. Sam Howell trying to step up, trying to get away, and he will. Sam Howell for the first down which was perplexing to me because I put contains on the field. I was like, just don't let this dude run. Don't let him hide. Julian Aguara with the hat trick, and that's going to let time run. OJ Howard trying to run into the end zone. He'll get a critical first down, but watch that clock. Tampa Bay still holding on to all those timeouts. Under a minute to go. Here's Howell. He's got the time. Oh, trying to take off, though. He'll get sacked yet again. Clock continues to move. Tampa Bay still cherishing those timeouts as the game clock is about to expire fire on them throw up a jump ball and we have a flag on the play okuda breaks it up but at the cost of defensive pass interference apparently i mean that was mike evans man you try to do what you can 28 seconds left at the one it's ronald jones he didn't get in he didn't get in that's more time gone tampa bay still not using their timeouts they're saving them for christmas and that's gonna be a false start with a running clock 10 seconds taken off and this might be the final play of regulation and tampa bay will run the ball and they won't even get in the buccaneers have absolutely bottled the final drive of the game and that's gonna allow the detroit lions to officially win this week to match up my goodness <laughs> weird weird it felt like you know both of us were trying to give the game away at certain points but man 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 that third down in inches when i threw the pick on the rpo first of all i thought that was just open right 
I was like chilling. I was like, all right, we might get a monitor for a touchdown here. He kind of got bumped on his route. And then after I threw it, I was like, why am I doing this? We can just get a two possession lead and we're just screwing around. We just need to put this game away. We've been playing well. And uh, thankfully, you know, I, I defense really did it. I, offense was moving the ball, but the defense, they were saving our butt a couple of times when we were just screwing around out there. But shout out to my guy, Theoid, man, especially after what happened in the preseason. You know, I didn't know what kind of game we are going to get here. Obviously, never underestimate your opponents, but uh, he definitely balled out. So shout out to my guy, Theoid. Good game to him. And, uh, yeah, he absolutely messed up that final drive, though. I think he, had, he got the ball with four minutes left, and he killed the entire clock and didn't get points. So that was kind of weird, right? That would have been really good if he was uh, up double digits but he was down double digits then he kept all of his timeouts for i suppose christmas i don't know if he's gonna give it to his kids christmas gifts so. <laughs> anyways week three yeah that's right like i told you we got two cfm games in one video that should speed in the process of us you know not falling behind in the cfm and getting videos out quickly it might take a toll on my voice box at some point during this video i don't know but we're just going to let it fly. Week three against the Seattle Seahawks. So we're off to a good start on the next gen, right? Against two good teams, two proven playoff teams over the year in the CFM. Tampa Bay has made the NFC Championship game twice in three or four seasons. And the Tennessee Titans have made the AFC Championship game twice in four seasons. The Seattle Seahawks have not quite had that success. They've won their division twice, but that's about it. We'll see if they have more success on the next gen as we are underway. And oh yeah, that DJ Uwe Angole death story is here. That's a big talking point for today's game as DJ is taken down on the first pass attempt. Jaron Reed getting the pressure and DJ's down again. This is not what we need. Third down and 31 from our own end zone. Just barely getting the screen off. The John Emery, good blocking by the boys and hard running there by Emery. And he'll get us eight yards. So, the dev story for quarterbacks in Madden is not like dev stories for normal players or any other player position out there. To get DJ Uyangole from superstar to X Factor, we need this man to get 350 total yards, passing or rushing, four total touchdowns, passing or rushing, and no turnovers, no interceptions. You gotta air it out. But you gotta be careful because if you make a mistake, Dev Story is done. And oh, by the way, you have to win the game. You have to win the game as well. You can't just play for the Dev Story because in order to play for the Dev Story, you need to win the game. The pressure is on for these kind of games, but uh, we gotta step up to the challenge. It's a good thing we are playing the Seattle Seahawks, though. I hate to say that, right? You never wanna sleep on your opponents, but you know, there are more stout teams, more proven teams in this league that I would rather not have this dev story against than the Seattle Seahawks. But, you know, anything can happen in these games. All it takes is one fluky bad pass where you get picked off. So it's just how do we approach this game? Well, as you saw in the opening drive, <laughs> not to a good start. Whatever we tried there didn't quite work. We go no huddle. Watch out. I'll tell you what the approach we need. We need to block. What are we doing? Free rushers all day. That's open. That's Galladay. And that's got to be defensive pass interference, which we'll take for the first down. But that does us nothing in the yardage count. <laughs> as far as passing yards, that's what we're looking for right now as we get it off to Cole Komet. Finally, we get a completion not off of a screen pass. And we're more than halfway through the first quarter. Simply said, this is is not going the way we would have liked it so far and we're losing the game by the way we are down 3-0 after that red zone possession and we simply cannot block up front right now it's just constant pressure by the Seattle Seahawks and a constant reliance on Cole Komet I love Cole Komet but we can't we can't keep going to Komet in these situations as John Emery gets the catch Emery's running tough out here he's trying to play for the dev story the refs are like hey man you can have these yards which is cool for me, but the refs aren't playing for the death story either because I got to accept that as commit. Hold on. Do not make that a fluky interception. Thank you very much. It's second down in the red zone. Amonra on the pitch. Tight roping, and he gets the touchdown. Amonra St. Brown. There you go. That's touchdown pass number one. Of course, remember, Jet passes are passes for the quarterback. So... You know, we might have to do a couple more jet sweeps out there just to, I don't want to say cowardly work our way up in this dev story, but take care of the football because, you know, how are we going to get passing yards without throwing interceptions? Well, you can't throw a pick on a jet sweep, am I right? As Rashad Penny is definitely the heart and soul of this 
of Seattle Seahawks offense. So we'll expect a lot of Penny. Oh, and some DK Metcalf as well. But we weren't expecting the ankle breaker. It's happened nonetheless. And Metcalf scores on his nice dance move. Shout out to that boy Tracy Walker who was just running around freely. I had to remind him that a football game was going on. <laughs> and he tried to get a tackle at the last second. Shout out to Next Gen. That's one of the weird things about Next Gen Madden. Sometimes dudes kind of forget they're in a football game when they're running out there in the open field. I don't, I don't know why, but... Not the worst that giving up that touchdown was not the worst thing to happen in the world And I'll tell you why as this drive goes on because as you guys know this as we have a flag here I believe that was holding which is going to negate at least a 10-yard game by Debo Samuel if it is holding and it is. The refs, they don't want to see this dev story. They give us yards when we don't need it. They take it away when we're looking for yards. Like, bro, help me. Help me, DJ. Help yourself. And Cole Komet. <laughs> Maybe we do need a heavy deal with such a Cole Komet. If he's going to keep getting open, we just got to throw it to the open guy. We proved it in last week's game against Tampa Bay that, you know, we don't rely on one player. Our offense is that dynamic. We have four Great wide receivers above average. Three X-Factor wide receivers. And Cole Komet stepping up like this. Thank you very much. Ho oh, oh. ho! Amonra with the sweet feet. Hey, Amonra, yards after the catch. That's yards for DJ. We'll take that. This is yards as well. Rushing yards. Ooh, we Angale will smartly slide down. They're not going to risk getting extra yards to potentially fumble like Howell did in the previous game. Debo underneath. Oh, Debo's running tough. Debo, John Emery, they got the message. They know this is a death story game for DJ Amara. I mean, Amara had that nice tightrope touchdown as well. We need plays like that. And we run no huddle here on first down. Ooh, Debo with a cut inside for the touchdown on the jet sweep. Hey, man, jet sweeps, RPOs. You never want to spam them in a CFM. But if the opponent's going to give them up, you know, hey. What am I going to do? Deny it? Absolutely not. We'll keep on going to it. But back to the point I was trying to make earlier. The reason why the Seahawks getting these 10 early points is not the worst thing in the world is because if this game does become a blowout, right? And we make great defensive plays across the board like Bobby Wagner just did robbing Rashad Benny of the football. Well... In a blowout, you can't pad stats or else, as we've seen, we had DJ get banned for, like, something I didn't even think was stat padding. We actually stat pad. We might really get in trouble as, ooh, we, Angle scores the touchdown rushing. That's TD number three in the game for DJ. Two touchdown passes, one rushing touchdown. Remember that Debo jet sweep just like the Amonra passes so that works in our favor a rush with dj is a rush a design rush will take it and shout out to amonra once again with the sweet feet you know we've been working that in pretty well so far this season but um yeah what we're about to do it looks like is you know potentially blow out the seattle seahawks but that's not a good thing because first things first we need to get the yards with dj before we um you know have to potentially bench him to risk not getting him suspended as Christian Holmes gets the interception here. My poor dude put his hands in the cookie jar. Come on, man. You can't do that. Christian Holmes with the interception after Eric Stokes dropped the one on the previous play. And, you know, I love turnovers, but, you know, I also love getting passing yards in this situation. That's not quite going to help. We run the ball a couple of times just to keep him honest. And then you hit him downfield with Kenny Galladay. You see, DJ, 179 rushing yards. You know, we got a lot of time to do it, but how much time do we do it before potentially the Seahawks go down by, like, 50? I don't know. At the same time, right, you don't want to disrespect your opponent because you do that. Next thing you know, they sack you, and it's third down and long, and the offensive line remembers, oh, yeah, we forgot how to block. Let's do that again, I suppose. Oh, but DJ! Ho, ho! A dime to Debo! DJ Ui Angole wants that X Factor and he wants it tonight. Debo Samuel is doing all he can to help out the cause once again. The spread attack and Debo Samuel stepping up to the table the past couple of weeks has been a wel welcoming sight, right? We haven't seen too much of Justin Shorter and you know, Debo, he's trying to play shorter out the rotation as good as Justin Shorter is. Debo's trying to say, hey, if you're going to trade one of these wide receivers, don't trade me. I'm good enough. I mean, that's still another story for another day. Right now, we're just focused on winning this 
uh, focus on winning this game and getting the dev story, right? Because, like, for me, this, like, even though it's against, like, the Seahawks here and we're up by 18 points in the second quarter, this is, like, a game I'm taking more seriously than a playoff game because I have a lot of fun doing the team building aspect of the CFM as, look at Debo. He said, please throw me the ball, and thankfully we eventually find him, and Debo slippery in the open field. He'll get about 10 yards of yak as we have shorter in motion. But, yeah, I love this team building aspect, and this is, like, the holy grail of building up a quarterback, getting the dev story and trying to get it done. So, you know, I'm really invested in trying to make this happen. Is DJ with all of the space in the world to take off. Hey, DJ, do your thing. Look at the big fella. We'll go out of bounds. I would have loved to lay a shoulder there, but, you know, we got to play smart. We can't, I don't know if a fumble is going to also negate the death story like an interception, but I'm not willing to find out as we have a minute 38 left in the first half. Watch out. Pressure again. As, you know, I tried to take care of the football. That potentially makes us miss open reads as we get the screen pass to Chanel on third down. LaVishka doing his thing. He's also trying to get slippery like a monitor. He did his best as we go no huddle here on fourth down and four. Hey, why kick field goals when we can get more passing yards? And, you know, we're up a lot. We've afforded ourselves this luxury, unfortunately, as I try to flip the formation, we got a penalty there. I was 100% going for that, by the way. That wasn't a chewing clock bluff we were pulling on the Seahawks. I was going for that. But, uh, yeah, we just end up kicking the field goal up and good so you know it's just about coming according to the plan right now the only thing is you know we're not quite there as far as total yards and the score is the score right now well it's still a 21 point game right things haven't gone ridiculously crazy but um yeah like i said you still don't want to disrespect people right because you screw around trying to keep a game close to do this dev story thing like you risk losing the game but you know as you guys may know i've done a lot of these kind of games to activate people's x factors with the x factor activated videos that's what i did i used to i would always risk losing games to activate that x factor right i would play for the stats offensively or defensively as opposed to just playing to win the game so i mean in a way i have a lot of experience screwing around like this so let's give it a go watch out russell wilson down it's julian Aguara and the lions calling timeouts here I'm trying to get that ball back, all right? I'm trying to get that ball back, trying to give us a chance to get more yards, and this is it! Jeff Okuda with the interception, and with three seconds left, Okuda foregoes the chance of the pick six, gives himself up, and that'll allow DJ to dive it in the corner to Amonra St. Brown, 262 passing yards as we end the first half, along with the rushing yards. And we're doing pretty good. Just need a little bit more. Oh, Richie James. He says, give me an inch and I'll take a mile. He's gone. And the Seattle Seahawks are back in it. For how long? We'll see. <laughs> Have they truly roped themselves back into this game as we may be more occupied with a secondary goal than the main goal, which should be winning the game, right? You play to win the game. Well, uh, this X Factor storyline says otherwise right now. You just got to do so much to win the game. And you got to play by CFM rules where you got to, like, not blow the guy out while doing it. It's just like, oh, it's headache. It's headache worthy, man. There's so much you got to do. And like I was saying before, right? You know, I'm trying to not throw interceptions so bad that I'm missing guys that may be open that I'm not trusting. I'm like, I want people to be wide that hell open if I'm throwing you the ball. Shout out to LaVishka for getting that first down, by the way, as we go no huddle here. Early third quarter, DJ, he'll roll it to the right with some space. Wide open, Chanel. We'll take that. I wish we'd have kept it in bounds, but uh, hold on a second. I really wish we would have kept it in bounds. I was talking about keeping it in bounds for a touchdown. He, he didn't make the catch? What? I'm going to review it, and we're going to lose the challenge. Huh? <laughs> I could have sworn that was a catch, man. But instead, oh, a Monroe will get the first down anyway. That dude is fast. <laughs> that didn't look like it was going to be a first down until a Monroe St. Brown made it a first down. As John Emery continues to break a tackle on just about every single time we give him the ball. And we'll throw it away here on second down and five. I said, you know, people might be open in different windows, but I'm not going to trust it unless it's wide open. We're so close at this point that we can kind of fetter it home, right? We don't got to go full throttle. We can just kind of take it easy and try to let a monitor make something happen here on third down and 17 rather than bombing it downfield. 
we're close, and I don't want to risk losing it. I also don't want to risk losing the game, but here we are. We were just up 21, and now the Seahawks have a chance to make it a one-possession game with plenty of time to go in the third quarter. Have we created an unnecessary situation here? Let's see. Third down, Russell Wilson making his season debut this week. By the way, getting the first down throw to Nico Collins. Russell Wilson got injured in preseason, so it was actually Spencer Sanders, I believe, who started the first two games for Seattle. Seattle, but Russell is healthy and ready to go against the Lions. Hasn't had the best of performances so far, but he gonna turn it around with a clutch third down conversion. This is not the definition of a clutch third down conversion. He checks it down immediately to Rashad Penny. We've done a pretty good job of keeping Rashad Penny in check, especially on downs that matter, and we'll force the punt here from Seattle, and unfortunately, Debo Samuel got punted there to the ground as we run it with John Emery. Once again, you know, we want to run the ball to keep him honest, get a couple of screen passes. Well, you know, screen passes too, right? Anything to get easy passing yards and not risk throwing turnovers is something I'm down with. And we also got to make sure we get first downs and we'll get it here with John Emery and a lot more than that. Emery open field. Oh, he's looking to do it again. And he might have been able to do it again, to be completely honest with you guys. John Emery might have had a touchdown there, but I didn't score it. I didn't score. I was like, John Henry might be able to score this, but I want to get a couple more yards. And Amonra, he actually lost the ball there. I think Jamal Adams will be credited with a fumble, but I just want to get more yards. I want to get to 350 passing yards to make sure we get this death score. We have it right now based on passing plus rushing yards, but... I want to make sure we get it as Chanel gets the run there. Not going to get too much. It's going to be third down. It's DJ looking for somebody who is wide open. I don't even see buttons. So we're just going to throw it away there and settle for the field goal on fourth down. Here is Johnny Hecker. That's his easy money to make it a three-possession game. So that's going to help us win the game. Hold on a second. We have roughing the kicker. Wow, what a bonehead penalty. That's going to bring the Lions offense back on the field here. And a new set of downs at the four late third quarter. DJ. Oh, with space to run it in there. But I want one more passing touchdown. And then I think we'll get it here with Debo Samuel. Yes, we will. Debo having perhaps his best game in a Lions uniform. And perhaps maybe one of the more unexpected times when we need like Kenny Galladay and Amonra to step up. It's been Debo having a fantastic outing out here. It's just whoever gets open will give him the ball. And right now, I'm just trying to cover all my grounds, right? Yeah, we might have 350 total yards, but I want to get a passing to make sure. Yeah, we might have four touchdowns with DJ, but I want to get four passing touchdowns just to make sure, right? I don't know if lost yards from getting sacked count because we've been sacked a number of times in this game. But I'm going to try to do whatever it takes. So uh, as Russell Wilson runs the ball here, now we're up 21 after we took away the field goal from the board and ended up getting a touchdown. Jeff Okuda got picked number two. And once again, Okuda will give himself up with a chance to score six. I feel so bad for Jeff and Amonra. Holy cow, second time he's lost the ball and it's gone out of bounds. Chill out, Mr. St. Brown. I feel so bad for Jeff Okuda because that dude doesn't normally get interceptions for us. And he had a chance to take not one but two for six. And I took them both away from him. But um, Jeff's going to have to eat this bullet, bite this bullet for the sake of the team. As we have 743 left, we're over 350 passing yards. We have a lot of rushing yards as well. I think we're good for this dev story, right? I'm kind of just overdoing it at this point. Like, maybe like just like overthinking it in my head right so at this point I think we're gonna just pull the reins here and just run the ball run it out here make sure we get this win and then you know because we've been screwed over by Madden Dev stories before I don't want that to happen again but you know, I think we're pretty good at this point. So Ty Chandler, we actually have the backups in the game at this point now as we go to Payne Durham and Durham on the RPO. Actually, you know, he scores the touchdown there. Caleb Williams in that quarterback and Antoine Littleton into the end zone once again. Littleton game number two and he scores a touchdown in his second career NFL game just like his debut. Littleton, garbage time hero out here. 269 pounds, but he didn't need to use a pound of that. You didn't have to use an ounce of that. The score of that touchdown is <laughs> all right. We you nearly know, get up another kick return touchdown. One of our uh, one like our backup tight end just got a big hit. We'll take that. Oh, Kuda playing out of his mind right now on the lowest of keys. Here's Spencer Sanders, by the way. He's back in the game. So not only did we bring in all of our backups, it looks like Seattle has at least brought in their backup quarterback as Rashad Penny. He's the starter. He's running the ball. And Penny, 12 rushes, 56 yards. I said we did a great job of making sure Penny didn't beat us today. As Spencer Sanders, fourth down. 
down. That's going to be incomplete. Oh, Will Harris. He hung in there as long as he possibly could. When it looked like he was going to get mossed at the last second, he finally dislodged that football. Even though the game was decided, man. You still want to see your guys make those plays. But this is not what you want to see. Ty Chandler on the ground. Looks like he's in a lot of pain. And that's going to bring a fellow Ty, Ty Johnson, into the game as we run a read option there with absolutely zero success. And we'll kick the field goal up and good with Johnny Hecker. That's cash money with a minute 24 left in the game. And Ty Chandler, I don't know if we showed the injury here, but Ty Chandler actually has a gruesome injury. I don't know. I don't remember what the injury was, but he's out for the next eight weeks. So Ty Chandler is going to be out for the next half a season, which is not too big of a loss for us because that's our backup running back. That's our John Emery insurance, but um, we've lost our insurance policy, right? Now we're just we're driving without car insurance out here for the next eight weeks. If Emery goes down, then all we have left is Chenault, <laughs> a converted wide receiver, and Ty Johnson. So, and Antoine Littleton, I suppose, so. <laughs> Let's just make sure John Emery doesn't get hurt for the next half a season. As the Seattle Seahawks running no huddle with 45 seconds left down 31? Am I getting that right? 31? No huddle? We choking? No? Okay. All right. Like, I don't understand. Like, in this situation, I wouldn't really run no huddle. I would just be like, all right, let's just, you know, I'll try, obviously we're going to score, but let's just, like, chill out, you know? <laughs> like, chill out, bro. But, um, you know, I always say when you're in these situations, when you're the team that's up by 31, you can't really complain. You just got to be like, all right, we're up by 31. This guy wants to have his fun. So be it. But I, like I said before, I believe in that week one game against Tennessee, these kind of situations also give your defensive players a chance to make big plays. So on the final play here, you know, a tackle for loss for either Micah Hyde or Will Harris, they'll take it. And we'll more importantly take the victory. And most importantly, we'll see if we can take that DJ Uyongole X-Factor development story. We drafted the quarterback number one overall thinking, hey, man, he went to Clemson. He, he did all this cool stuff. He'll be an X-Factor off the bat. Madden said, nah, or the devs tool, whatever. So does no, and they said earn it. Well, we uh, put our head down. We, we grind the DJ out year one, got him some crazy stats, made him look good. He went from star to superstar. Now we get ourselves a story, and we've done it. DJ Uyongale is now an X Factor quarterback in the Premier Madden League. Let's go, baby. That's that's like like I said, man. Like that that feels better to me than getting a playoff win. Cause I love I love the process of building a team. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I, I honestly put a lot of time into like trying to figure out how to build a team well. As uh, we'll check out that Ty Chandler injury before we check out DJ's X Factor abilities and all that. Cause that's big, right? Cause when you get a when you normally get a player to X Factor, it's not a big deal. But when you get quarterbacks to X Factor, three new slots of superstar abilities. Unfortunately, two of these slots pretty trash we have comeback which would be nice if the x-factor wasn't first one free a running back ability and we have gutsy scrambler gutsy scrambler might be nice but the last slot escape artist hey escape artist escape artist isn't what it was in madden 20 this year not quite on next gen either or previous gen but escape artist is still escape artist would i love some gunslinger or pass lead elite over escape artist yeah but am I going to be mad about having a skate artist along with Pocket Deadeye with DJ? Hey, man, I'll take that. We'll see how that all shakes out next time, though. Leave a like on this video if you guys enjoyed. If you guys enjoyed this new setup for the CFM, if you guys enjoyed the two games, GG's to Seattle, uh, GG's to the league. DJ is now an X-Factor looking like a baller. We'll see how DJ's first game as an X-Factor is in the next video. So I'll catch you guys then. Thank you, as always, for watching.